Hi everyone, John from Chippernet here, introducing the latest version 3.2 assembled shift light. Lots changed over the last few years. We had a couple of years of really high demand for the assembled version and it was taking me like an hour to build one of these. And when you're doing that multiple times a night, um, every night of the week, it kind of, well, frankly, it burned me out. <laughs> and so I took the assembled version off the website and was just selling the kits, but that didn't stop the demand. I kept getting emails and comments, people asking for an assembled version to be brought back. So this last summer, I'm like, look, I really should spend some time developing something that one, um, you know, incorporates the latest feedback from the community. Um, and also is not like super difficult for me to assemble and package every night, right? because who wants to just be sitting there soldering away for hours and hours every single night after you get home from work. So uh, I set out designing the circuit, incorporating the same um, architecture, the, uh, the Amtel 328P chip. From there, I went into prototyping. Tons and tons and tons of 3D printing. I had multiple iterations and designs of the case, the knob. Don't even get me started. I probably 3D printed, uh, I don't know, 200 of these knobs because um, I needed to get the fitment in the field just right so that when you spin the knob, it feels good and it responds correctly. And so yeah, I've got just tons of these. I then had the boards manufactured by a company out of Illinois called RW Technologies. So shout out to the guys down at RW Tech. They've been fantastic, excellent customer service. They handled all the procurement and then they assembled it and shipped them out to me. Um, it was a really smooth process and they were able to turn around really quickly for me. Um, the case was uh, manufactured by Envision Plastics out of Minnesota. Also extremely good experience working with those folks. So if you've got small production runs of cases that you want to get manufactured, they do all sorts of shapes and sizes. I'm not sponsored by any, either one of these companies. Um, it's just I had a really tremendous experience with them. Give them a shout out. That's RW Tech out of Illinois and um, Envision Plastics out of Minnesota. I'd really also like to shout out and give a big thank you to the community and everyone that, that not only purchases the product and supports chippernut.com, but also the folks that reach out to me and they send me emails um, and comments, you know, ideas and new features. A lot of the new stuff, a lot of the new features in 3.2 are user submitted ideas. And so I just wanna say thank you, I appreciate it. I know it takes me a little while sometimes to get back to you on your emails, but I do read them. So I, again, really thank you all the customers and everyone that's been interested in the shift light over the years watching this product grow. That, that being said, I'm not gonna keep rambling. Let's dig into some of the new features of the uh, version 3.2 assembled shift light. All right, first let's start with the new features of the version 3.2 assembled. Um, first of all, obviously, as I mentioned, you'll notice the brand new case. Um, it also has a new uh, layout of the screen and the knob, and there are two new LED graph options as well. This is also something that um, was direct feedback from the community. The folks really wanted to have a housing uh, to put the LEDs in, something that was more of a display and something that could actually you know, protect the LEDs. The version 3.2 also has several software improvements as well. I've refined the brightness adjustment so that's more linear. There's new animations inspired by Formula One. You can now adjust the rate of the flash. There's new animations for the shift styles. And you can save all of your settings in five user-defined profiles. Switching between these profiles is as easy as rotating the knob. When you enter into one of these modes, and you select Sport for example, and then you enter the menu system, any changes that you make get saved to that profile. So now what I'd like to do is just give you a brief overview of all of the menu options before I move on to installation. To enter the menu system, simply press down on the knob. Rotating the knob moves you between the different menu options. To make a change to one of the menu options, simply press down on the knob. Then rotate the knob to make the adjustment. When you're happy with that selection, simply press down on the knob to save your setting. So the menu options are brightness, Dimmer, this allows you to set the uh, brightness of the LED um, based on the input provided on the yellow wire. Then there's activation RPM, which is the point at which the graph starts reading. Shift RPM, which is the point at which you want the display to flash. Then there's smoothing. This should only be used if you're getting a glitchy reading on your graph here. Pulses per rotation, this is for configuring the shift light to your engine. So for a four cylinder engine, you'll select two pulses per rotation. A six cylinder engine, you will select three pulses per rotation. And an eight cylinder engine, you will select four pulses per rotation. Next option is the number of LEDs. 
By default, this is set to 16. However, if you have a longer LED strip, you can change this up to 32. Next is color segmentation. When you enter this menu option, it's gonna allow you to define where the color segments lie on your graph here. Next is animation mode. There's left to right, center out, right to left, out to center, F1 style A, and F1 style B. When you select an animation mode, it's gonna ask you to rebuild your color segments. Simply rotate the knob to adjust your color segments, and then push down to save. The next menu option is flash style. And you can see we've got our standard flash. Then there's alternating mode, steady on, color flash, there's center flash, edge flash, and then no flash. So let's select edge flash. You can also adjust the flash rate. This is adjusted in milliseconds, so you can have it go really, really fast, or you can slow it down. Next in the menu system, you can configure color one. So what'll happen when you enter this menu item is it'll display the entire bar graph as you've got it configured. And then when you adjust the knob, it will change just the first, just the first segment. When you're happy with the color, simply push down. The next menu option is setting color two. So that'll be the second segment in your display. And then setting color three, the third segment. The next menu option is the shift color. Right now I have this set to white, but you can change this to any color that you want. The last menu option is a system reset. This will restore all of the default values in the shift light, as well as reset all of the profiles. When you're happy with your configuration, scroll back to the very first menu option where it displays menu and then press to save and exit. Installation. Installation of the shift light is very easy. You've got a four pin connector. This goes to the LED graph. You then have a green, a red, a yellow and a black. The green wire connects to the RPM signal. This is a digital square wave produced either by your vehicle's ignition controller or, or ECU. Red and black, this is easy, this is power and ground. So black is ground, red is uh, positive 12 volts. And then yellow is your dimmer wire. For the dimmer circuit, simply tap the yellow wire into any illumination circuit in your vehicle. That way when you turn your lights on, whether that's uh, ground switched or power switched, that signal will be picked up by this yellow wire. You can configure the circuit logic in the menu system under the dimmer option. All right, that about does it folks. Thank you very much for joining me on this brief introduction of the new version 3.2 assembled shift light. Thank you all for watching, stay tuned.